New York Jets fans, welcome to a very new session of Jets Talk here on Knicks Bros TV. The 2015-2016 NFL Draft is history, and man, do I love our position um, you know, in the history books as far as our drafts are concerned. Uh, probably one of the most successful slash um, progressive drafts we've had in a quite, a, quite a long time. Uh, New York Jets fans are really known to just constantly boo their first and second draft picks just because we've made some, you know, uh, not very fine decisions as far as drafting is concerned. Um, as you can see, Mike McKagan has, you know, uh, let go and cleaned a lot of house as far as the scouting team and the directors are concerned. So I'm really, really loving the direction that the New York Jets are heading. Um, it's exciting. It's new. It's smart more than anything else. Just to know that, you know, you got a guy that really knows his stuff, um, you know, and more than anything, we didn't pass down on the players that we thought were going to be impact players right off the bat, the first and second round. Uh, we, we took advantage of it. And when they dropped down to us, like Leonard Williams from USC, we took advantage of that. Um, you know, we took advantage of Devin Smith, you know, much more of a vertical runner, um, can be a nice compliment to, you know, Brandon Marshall on the other side. Um, you know, and Decker and Curley can be maybe your, um, you know, short yards wide, or short yard wide receivers. Having Devin Smith and Brandon Marshall really makes me happy, just for the fact that I know we're going to have weapons for whomever is going to be a quarterback going to next season for, uh, you know, the red zone because obviously we were one of the worst teams last year when it came down to the red zone. And Devin Smith picked up 12 touchdowns last year, and I feel like Brandon Marshall definitely brings that, um, you know, size factor uh, to the team. Now, this video is not really going to be about anything else, but what I like to consider now uh, another quarterback controversy in New York. Um, there's been a lot of mixed feelings, uh, as expected. Um, also, you know, with us drafting Bryce Petty in the fourth round, which I did not expect him to be still there in the fourth round. Uh, but the fact that he was and we took him, I felt like it was a smart decision. Now, in my previous videos, there have been comments that have been, you know, uh, left as far as, you know, um, who should be a quarterback, whether Gina Smith should get another shot, uh, Bryce Petty should be the quarterback right off the bat, oh uh, no, it should be Ryan Fitzpatrick. Stop. That's exactly what, you know, um, I'm thinking right off the bat. The fact that Bryce Petty should be a quarterback next season or we should put him into the game uh, week 10, week 9, no. As New York Jets organization, one thing we have to start doing is building our quarterback's confidence. We have a tendency to break a quarterback's confidence. I felt like Mark Sanchez's confidence was broken as soon as Tim Tebow came to the team. Uh, Mark Sanchez, not single-handedly, no, not at all, uh, took us to AFC Championship uh, games um, You know, with one year, two year experience. And we're looking at a guy that did for somewhat have, have, have weapons. Um, you know, he had, you know, Holmes on one side, he had a decent running game with LT. Um, so, and on top of that, we had a very ridiculous defense. A defense where, you know, it wasn't figured out at all because it was Ryan, um, Rex Ryan's first one or two years in the league. Um, so, in, in, as far as Ryan, uh, Rex Ryan's concerned, we've always had an amazing defense uh, as far as Rex Ryan was concerned. Um, even last year, I mean, our defensive line and our linebacking core, for the most part, uh, were, were, were tremendous. It was just our defensive backs that were terrible. Um, so with that being said, it leads me to Geno Smith. Um, I'm not a Geno Smith fan. Um, I haven't been a Geno Smith fan uh, whatsoever. I, I didn't like him uh, in college, out of college, but he's a New York Jet. Um, I, don't, I don't want him as my quarterback at all. But this is where I'm going with this: is you know you're gonna invest the second you're gonna invest the second round pick, you might as well give him a shot. The reason why I say give him a shot is last year we can all agree if you truly watched the New York Jets games last year, the man did not have any weapons. 
He did not. He had no weapons. I mean, we all, a lot of us got very excited with Decker being signed. And I get it. That was a good pickup. But he's not a number one wide receiver. And Decker didn't get hot till you know, um, later, later weeks within the year. Amaro showed potential. There were some, you know, missed drop passes that he had that were very frustrating for me, and I can't seem to drop it. Um, get it? Drop it because Amaro dropped passes. But, uh, no, um, you know, Amaro shows potential. Curly, I thought, was probably the most safest wide receiver to go to last year. So, and on top of that, or defense couldn't be, you know, we couldn't count on our defense. I mean, it came, if, it came, if it came down to a shootout, we would lose. So do I feel like Geno Smith, did he have the right, um, you know, was he under the right circumstances last year? No, he wasn't. Um, and, you know, and as far as our defense was concerned, in the pre past years, they were able to hold up and make Mark Sanchez look good. Um, now, going going to Geno, uh, I like the fact that we picked up Ryan Fitzpatrick just because we create competition for him. Now, going to next season, I don't want Geno to win the quarterback position. I want Ryan Fitzpatrick to step in. That's the way I want to see it. Just for the fact that I know Ryan Fitzpatrick has had history with Chan Gailey. Um, th those two go back. I definitely think you know Ryan Fitzpatrick is the guy to go to as far as putting up points. I mean, this is a guy that we're talking about. He's consistently been over 17 touchdowns or more for the past four or five years. Um, in 2010, 23 touchdowns with the Bills. 2011, 24 touchdowns with the Bills. 2012, 24 touchdowns with the Bills. Um, and then in Tennessee, he did have 14. In Houston, he had 17. Um, with a, in Houston, he had a quarterback rating of 95.3. Um, he does throw a lot of interceptions, I have to say. Um, but I, I'll tell you one thing. One thing that we learned from this draft is we picked up depth. We picked up depth in the defensive line for a team that's playing 3-4 and not 4-3. I mean, goodness gracious, it's going to be Mo Williams, um, Shelton Richardson. It's going to be uh, Leonard Williams. I mean, I just I can't imagine how well our defensive line is going to play next season. I felt like, you know, we, you know, linebacking court, it's not our strong strong side of our defense, but you know, with D. Harris, we drafted Malden from uh, Louisville. I think he's going to be able to contribute his first year, and then going to our defensive backs with you know uh, Revis and Cromarty and um, Gilchrist, and uh, hopefully a much more better strong safety prior, because his performance was really disappointing. Um, uh, you know, last season. So basically what I'm trying to get at is either Geno Smith gets the right opportunity this season because this season is a good way to uh, you know, evaluate who and what Geno Smith is because this year there's no excuses. There's no excuses to blame you know, Rex Ryan and the fact that you know, he didn't hold the players accountable and Geno Smith was late. He cursed at fans. and I understand the frustration was boiling over. But, you know, I think he should deserve a fair chance to compete with Ryan Fitzpatrick, and that's it. Don't even bring up Bryce Petty. Let the man stay on the sideline. Let the man learn the offense. Don't put pressure on him. I'll bet you, though, week 9, week 10, Geno Smith is going to mess up or something, and Ryan Fitzpatrick is not going to be uh, – I mean, he's not our savior. And there might be, you know, a couple of Bryce Petty chants, but all that should be ignored. Bryce Petty is a long-term fix. Um, again, let's build the confidence of our quarterbacks. Let's let them kind of get settled in. Um, he's definitely a smart quarterback. I mean, if you look at Bryce Petty's stats, I mean, we're talking about a guy that, you know, um, you know, his completion completion rating is off the charts. Um, I'm trying to look it up right here. He's got about 62 touchdowns and uh, 10 interceptions with with Baylor I mean the first two years he didn't significantly play but his first year when he did play um, 32 touchdowns three interceptions 29 touchdowns and seven interceptions so you can tell although it is the college football don't, don't get me wrong that this guy you know he can put up points and at the same time he knows how to read 
plays. Um, unlike Geno Smith, that's his, that's where I think Geno struggles. Um, and I hate to, I hate to, I hate to, you know, keep backing up Geno Smith because I was so mad, I'm mad at him last year. There were a couple of games where he showed some sort of potential. Um, you know, the Patriots game was one, and then there were some games where obviously he made you scratch your head and was like, "Why did you ever draft him?" Um, so again, I think going in, going into next season, there should be uh, you know a competition between Ryan Fitzpatrick and Geno Smith for a quarterback position, and whomever wins it, I think is well deserved. Um, either way, anyhow, any quarterback besides Bryce Petty will prosper in this team because of our defense. And on top of that, we have weapons in our wide receiving core that's going to be able to give any quarterback that steps in as a uh, starting quarterback to be able to uh, be successful um, for the most part. Because right now, going to next season, we're not expecting a quarterback to win games for us. We're not expecting a quarterback to come uh, you know, from behind. We're expecting a quarterback to keep us in the game. And the way you keep us in the game is you keep down the turnovers, you play it safe. One of the biggest uh, you know, mistakes that I saw last season was, was Geno Smith making dumb plays and us getting away from the running game. Notice the games that we were um, able to stay in it or made, made close were the games where we actually had some sort of a running game. Against the Oakland Raiders, uh, we maintained some sort of a running game, uh, kept the defense uh, guessing. Uh, when we played against the Packers, we kept some sort of a running game. Kept their defense packing, but we all know we choked in the, was the third or fourth quarter. Uh, let the Green Bay Packers back into the game. And that's where I really, truly feel like the season turned on us. Because later on, we went to San Diego, got blown out. That's when our defensive backs got, uh, you know, uh, everybody found out that our defensive backs are terrible. Um, but no, you know, going to this season with, with the ac uh, acquisitions that we've had with... Um, you know, bringing uh, Stacy in from the St. Louis Rams, which I thought was genius because all we gave up was a seventh round pick. And I think Chris Ivory, the potential he showed last season is going to be great. We have Riley at the position as well and Powell. And unfortunately for Powell, I can't see him, uh, you know, being able to do anything next season with the type of competition that he did have. And although he did sign a new contract with us, I really can't see him uh, being part of a starting team next season. So again, I feel really good with the with the acquisitions for the draft and the free agency. All we have to look forward to next, uh, you know, the training camp is is a constant, um, you know, battle of death for who's going to start. I mean, you can't go wrong with um, a lot of our positions going to next season. And again, whomever is going to take over quarterback position is going to be someone that is most likely not going to, you know, turn the ball over too much. Um, and again, I, if we end up, you know, getting into a shootout with any team, which I doubt because I really think we will be a dominant defense, running and passing. And for the most, you know, for the past two years, we've been more of a uh, rushing defense rather than uh, coverage defense ever since we lost Revis and Cromartie. But, you know, going into next season, I really think, you know, if we do get into a shootout with anyone, Ryan Fitzpatrick's the guy that's going to be able to do it unless Geno Smith is going to clean up his uh, end zone game but I really don't think Geno Smith is going to stick around New York for too long I don't think he's the type of quarterback um, we're definitely going to part ways with him I truly believe next after next season and you know what if somehow some way Geno Smith turns out to be a amazing quarterback next season I'll be the first one to apologize um, and again this is just based off what I see I'm not a I'm not an analyst. I'm not any of that. I'm just a guy that likes the sport of football, and I just sit there and I watch. And what I see from Geno Smith is is just a lot of inconsistency. A guy with a lot of potential, um, but in some games you could definitely see that potential in him. But um, I just don't think he's the right guy. He doesn't prevail. Um, he regressed from his rookie year. Um, the last couple of games in his rookie year, that's when everyone – thought, you know, Geno Smith is going to come out. I mean, if you guys remember last year, we were considered maybe a potential Super Bowl contending team. We all know how that turned out. So again, guys, 
Tell me what you think. Tell me what you think about the quarterback position for the New York Jets. Sorry if I rambled on a little bit, but it's a topic that I know we're going to be discussing. Probably on Monday I'll be getting together with uh, maybe Young J00 or maybe get some other New York Jets guys on as well. Again, guys, if you want to talk, I don't care if you're a Jets fan, uh, Browns fan, Bills fan, Raiders fan. If you want to get on and talk some football with me, that's cool. You know, uh, Please subscribe. And again, thanks for everyone that showed a lot of love for the hype video that I made for the New York Jets. Expect another one to come out. And again, please share these videos. I love doing them. Uh, I've done a lot of videos on the New York Jets, so I'll definitely do one on the Mets. But I really, really feel excited for this team under Mike McKagan and Todd Bowles. And I got to say, Mike McKagan has, uh, has proved us all that he's the right person for the position. Now it's all on Todd Bowles to see what he does. Uh, again, thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.